Welcome back. Um, I am Lily Richards, and I'm uh, pretending to be a host today, uh, just for a very short segment, and then I'll go back to being a reviewer, so don't panic. You're doing a very good job already. I mean, that was, a, that was the perfect welcome back from the break, really. Welcome, everyone. Excellent technique. Uh, um, so, I'm sitting here with Emily Draper, who is the uh, winner of the Sunday Star Times Short Story Competition Award for 2011. And what was the category that you won? Um, secondary school division. Right. Yeah. So that's what ages are allowed to enter that? Anyone in high school, I think. Okay. Yeah. And you didn't just win the overall title, you got second place as well. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. a different story. <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon that's ever happened before? I'm not sure. I don't think so. <laughs> no one's told you that this is a common occurrence? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been a finalist last year and the year before, and that didn't happen then, but... You never know. So where did you rank in the past two um, as a finalist in that? Um, just like in the top ten. Okay. Yeah. Because well, so you, you stopped? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so part of the thing that you win that I saw was, was it $800 worth of random house titles? Yes. Uh, so do you have your eye on any particular books that you, you want to read? Um, family's Christmas presents. <laughs> nice. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> giving your gifts away. <laughs> Any random house titles that you're excited about reading for yourself? Or? Um, no, I have to have a look, but I'm excited about the mere prospect of $800 worth yeah. of books. Oh, that's amazing, actually. I yeah. had a $50 Whitcalls voucher once, and it was overwhelming. <laughs> $800, that's going to take you a long time to get through. It's a great reward for a writer, though, right? Because mm. often a writer who's worth their salt has to read heaps. So do you find yeah. you read a lot? Yeah, I read a lot. Oh. <laughs> so. One of the questions I ask sometimes of writers is, instead of like a last meal, yeah. you're going to die in this question, so don't panic. <laughs> but instead of a last meal, you had a last book that you could read before you died. What would it oh, be? Um, probably something depressing. <laughs> <laughs> 1984 is normally my go-to book. Nice. George Orwell. Something yeah. depressing and long, people often say. <laughs> so they draw yeah. out the death. Yeah. Um, now, who were the judges for your for your own? Um, the main judge was Joy Cowley. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure about the others. <laughs> I think it was Grimshaw, wasn't it? Charlotte Grimshaw for the oh, other yes, ones. Oh, yes, for the other, yes. Yeah, but um, Joy Cowley, I read a quote saying that she was awed by, by your writing. Do you, is she an author that you sort of know much about, or did that mean a lot? Well, yeah, I think Joy Cowley's like a huge name in New Zealand literary world, so it's an amazing comment to hear from her. Yeah, you should yeah. be, we should be really proud. Um, so, what, tell us a bit about your story. Um, basically, it's about two brothers and they're lying on the road outside their house and then they hear their parents' car come home, so they quick scramble to kind of get inside before they're caught. And Joy Cowley said as well, I've been doing my reading, <laughs> uh, my research, and she said that she felt that in that, um, that in your category, that the, the younger authors wrote from experience and awareness. Which were you in this story? I think a bit from column A, a bit from column B. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, although I'm not a 10 year old boy, um, I think. The, Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, the common themes of, of childhood and kind of fear and loss of innocence are things that everyone goes through. You can understand universally. Yeah, nice yeah. humanising. Also, do you want to read a small segment that I've chosen? I've chosen one paragraph from your story, Smoke Rings, which is the winner. Um, and I've chosen this because I think it really illustrates quite well your ability with description and the tone of things. Because there's a sort of a sinister undertone that, that runs through this, but also because it's about childhood, there's sort of a levity too. Okay. You, would you read this for us? Sure. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance we hear sirens, a hard shove forward through slow traffic. I lift my fingers to my mouth. Slick black marks zigzag down the street, reminders of Saturday night's racing. An empty potato chip packet is making small scratching sounds as it dances with the wind along the asphalt. Another puff. Now I feel the hard beating in my chest. Beautiful. So, so what now? It gets printed in Sunday Star Times so everyone can read it in full? Yeah. When's that come out? Do you know? I don't know, but I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, do you have any plans for writing anything else? A collection of short stories, maybe? Or? Yeah, I'd love to do that, I think. Try and fit that around my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. We'd love to read more from you, I think. In general, I'm saying I think because I do. Matt, give to I you. absolutely do. I haven't actually read your short story yet, and I'm going to get you to send me a copy of it, please. Uh -huh. Thank I you very much. It. So the Sunday Star Times short story winner and second place, please round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Emily Draper.
a name you'll be hearing a lot more of and seeing a lot more of on bookshelves, I'm sure, in the future as well. Yes, maybe in my bookstore. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just owning your new books now. Uh, and now we've got a music video for you. Thank you so much for doing that. It's fantastic. No uh, Black Keys, Lonely Boy. Yeah? You are different. See, they're right. You are seriously. Guy's got to watch out for his job at the moment. Watch out, Guy. Just go. Black Keys. <laughs>